What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk, talk about a brand new add-on from the creator of Decal Machine that allows us to quickly and easily work with curves inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Curve Machine is a brand new add-on from Machine. Um, you probably know him from other add-ons like uh, Mesh Machine as well as Decal machine. Uh, we've talked about decal machine a lot on this channel. Um, it's a great tool for adding decals. But this tool specifically is designed to make working with curves more flexible and easier to use. And basically what makes this so powerful is it's a non-destructive curve editing tool set, um, meaning you can use it in order to adjust like number of bevels on curves. You can move all the different points around and um, it's really powerful for working with those different curve pieces. It can make your life a lot easier um, when it comes to making editable curves. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. One thing to note about this is there is great documentation on this tool. So if you go into the documentation links um, on this page, notice how there's a documentation in here for all of the different tools that's going to show you kind of what these do, right? So it's going to show you what the slide tool does, merge tool, all of that. So if you do end up with this add-on, I definitely recommend that you go check out the documentation. Okay. And so when you first install this, you want to make sure that you go into your edit preferences and um, you want to make sure that you've installed and enabled curve machine right here and so basically what this is going to do and notice how you can see this right here is it's going to pop up a, a menu when you're editing curves using the y key now you can come in here and you can adjust the shortcuts if you decide that you want to do that. Um, I've just been kind of leaving them as is, but if you do want to adjust them, that is available inside of the preferences settings. But let's take a look at what this can do. Okay, so first off, what this tool does is it adds a new kind of curve. So if you do a shift A on your keyboard, go into curve and you select the option for single point poly curve, what that's going to do is that's going to drop this point in here at your 3D cursor location. I kind of moved it over here so you can see that. But basically, this is a special kind of curve that, um, that curve machine is going to be able to read. So if I tab into edit mode right here, which I guess I was already in, um, you're basically going to use this as if you would any other tool. So you're going to tap the E key in order to extrude this. But notice what this does is this gives me the ability to extrude this out and it's going to create a curve object like this. And so now what we can do is we can edit this object using Curve Machines tools. So, and again, you need to be in edit mode, right? If you tap the Y key, you notice how nothing's gonna happen unless you are in edit mode. But basically the way this is going to work is you can select different points on your curve and you can tap the Y key and it's going to pop up this little window right here. And there's a number of different tools in here that we can take a look at. Probably the one that you're going to use the most though is going to be the Blendulate tool. And what the Blendulate tool is going to do is it's going to allow you, if you tap the Y key and then activate Blendulate, that's going to pop up this little window that's going to give you the ability to add things like segments. And so if you look at this, notice how I can move my mouse in order to set um, basically the radius of this curve, right? So as I move my mouse, it's going to adjust the amount it's happening in here. Now note that if I scroll my mouse wheel up, what this is going to do is this is going to add additional segments in here. So you move your mouse to set the amount, you scroll to set the number of segments. Now notice how there's an option here for tension. So if I tap the T key, right, and move my mouse like this, actually I'm holding the T key down, I'm not tapping it, but it's basically adjusting the tension of that curve in here. And so notice how that curve is going to look different depending on what that tension is going to be. So if you set your tension very low, notice how it basically, um, it basically like bevels this off and then gives you a straight line. But if you move your tension up way high, notice what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull it really hard and it's gonna add like a loop in here. So. Um, move your mouse to set the mount, hold the Y key and move your mouse to set the tension, scroll your mouse wheel to set the number of segments. And then when you're done, you could just click and it's going to set those right here. Okay, so let's say I was to come up here and run this over here. So we're gonna run the Blendulate again and we're gonna go ahead and click. Well, the cool thing about this is if you come in here and you select these 
later on. So if I tap the Y key and I run that blendulate tool, notice how I can adjust this, right? So basically this is non-destructive in the sense that I can come back in here later and select this. So if I want less segments in here, all I have to do is rerun that blendulate tool and just scroll my mouse down in order to adjust this. So it's basically like non-destructive curve editing in here. You don't have to do any like right clicking or you don't have to do any like dividing or splitting or anything like this. It does that kind of for you. Okay. And so another cool thing about this is remember how I added these in here? Well, these were already kind of in there, right? But you can tap the Y key and activate this tool. And so the cool thing about this is you can select this and activate the blendulate tool. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add segments in here. Now, one thing to note about this is notice how this is placing these like way out there, right? It's not quite doing what we want. Well, if you tap the A key, what it's going to do is it's going to do an automatic tension in here. Well, when you do the automatic tension, what it's going to do is it's going to try to approximate a circular arc. So if you tap that A key with these activated, it's going to try to do this automatically. But notice how I can come in here and scroll up and I can add extra segments in here really quickly um, from my existing curve pieces. Now say that you wanted to get rid of some of these quickly, right? So say you didn't want this many, we wanted to get rid of these. You can also tap the Y key and you can activate the option for merge to center. That's going to merge all of these together. So you can use this in order to quickly get rid of those. You can also with the blendulate tool active, if you want to merge them, you can just tap the M key right here. Now you do want to be a little bit careful with that. Notice how it's merging them like way out there. So you're probably better off just tapping the Y key and just merging them to center right here. And so this tool also does give you quick access to, um, if you've ever used like the bevel function over here in order to add a tube, um, this gives you the ability if you tap the Y key, notice how if you scroll down and you adjust the depth right here, that's going to quickly add a tube along your path so you don't have to mess around with your settings over here on the right hand side. Um, you can also, if you tap the Y key and you use the extrude function, notice how that's going to kind of extrude that upward, right? So you can come in here and you can kind of adjust this a little bit to give it a thickness, but you can also use that extrusion to, um, to create kind of this like bar shape or something like that, right? Like a steel bar. But um, notice how this is all still active if you use the blendulate function, meaning you can use this in here um, in order to create this extrusion, but also have it, uh, it's gonna add that additional geometric detail in here um, as you make this change. So um, I can use this, I can scroll up or down, notice how it's going to add all of that in here automatically, right? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And so that, e that detail is added in here for you. And then if you were to come in here and you were to continue extruding this out, right? Like this, it's going to continue adding that extrusion to your curve. And so this does also give you the option, if say if you wanted this to be like a closed shape like this, you can select the two ends, tap the Y key, and then you can click on the option for cyclic. And actually, I'm not 100% sure if you need to actually select those two before it does that. But if you select the option for cyclic, what it's going to do is it's going to close your curve in like this. And so this tool also gives you the ability if you tap. So if you select one of these and you tap G, G, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to slide along the edges. So basically what that does is that's going to slide this point along the direction from this point to this point or from this point to this point. So that can be especially helpful for things like, uh, let's say that we did have this curved in a little bit and we just needed to adjust this. Like say that we needed to do like a fine adjustment of our curve or something like that. You can use this in order to slide this along that last edge and it's gonna give you that kind of like smooth transition in here. So if you ever have like a kink or something like that, that's in here, uh, you can use that in order to kind of straighten that out. So the slide is very helpful for um, basically moving things along the natural progression of a curve. All right, so what I'm really liking about this tool is the ability that it allows you to come in here and make changes in kind of a non-destructive fashion, at least in the sense that you can go back and actually make adjustments to things that you've changed before. So um, from a curve editing standpoint, I found it pretty easy to use, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.